Welcome back. We're in the new digs, and I think this will be the second or third video I'm doing on Great Battles of History. Looking at uh, Macedonian Art of War. We're at the top of turn three, and we've actually just completed part of the uh, elite initiative option that's available to uh, the overall commanders that have uh, that have the, the right or privilege to, to do so. It means they get the first activation if they want it. And then that unit is then not finished, uh, and nor are they eligible to execute a momentum activity. But basically it lets them act first at the top of the turn, which, you know, it makes sense. We can see how that works. But given how effective Alexander is anyway, it becomes a very powerful tool with seven commands that he can issue and that uh, that can be interesting now I, it's been a while since i played this and in fact i've only played this particular module three or four times and in the past i've typically used the simple great battles of history rules so i'm somewhat of a novice when it comes to this system uh, this particular module, even though I have played Great Battles of History, you know, maybe a hundred times, right? So, when I look at this contextually from a history standpoint, you know, Alexander pretty much got away with everything, was very lucky, was very adept at uh, managing the battlefield and changing uh, tactics or adapting to the situation very quickly. And so when you read some of the rules and you think, well, is this, can he do this or can't he do that? Uh, how does that all work uh, within the confines of the system? I tend to err on the side of allowing him to pretty much do whatever he wants uh, <clears throat> within reason. And so when you, when you read these rules, there are uh, certain units that are eligible to execute line commands. And I'm just wondering if there's one here on the board somewhere that he should not be flipped over. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I see one off the top of my head. Yes, here's one here. So this dude, uh, Nabrazini's, is uh, he has an L, and therefore he's eligible to issue a line command. Now, units that don't have that capability, don't have that L, uh, sorry, uh, leaders that don't have that L, don't get to do that. And the other type of little character we have on the map are these contingent commanders and they are basically Macedonian leaders of generals of small formations and there's several of them on the board and they're activated by being within a certain range of the overall commander. Now what's interesting in the rules is that uh, it says that if you don't have an L you can't execute a line command and typically uh, so there's that but then over in the over the overall commander rules, it says that they can execute line commands, but they don't have an L on them. And it's not a subsection of any of the other rules, and so we've got to kind of believe that overall command is being under rule 4.4, and the line commands capability is under 4.3, two very separate rules. Uh, it says, uh, it does It does say here though, that over, in, in under 4.3, the overall commanders can issue line commands, <laughs> right? And, and, it, and it states when. Uh, and then there's a separate section for overall commanders. So <clears throat> I think Alan Ray had mentioned that because overall commanders were, were referenced in regards to line commands, and if they didn't have the L, that they therefore were not eligible stick with me here people uh, then that meant that Alexander couldn't issue a line command and don't know Alan don't know Richard Berg God rest his soul but if Alexander can't issue a line command and this little satrap dude can then we, we got issues so as far as I'm concerned wing commanders and uh, Alexander, overall commanders, can issue line commands. The same would be uh, true for Darius. Darius is the overall commander. We've got to expect that he can issue a line command. Otherwise, he can only issue three orders. And we know that he's an inept 
leader in this particular battle, but uh, we have to be able to make the assumption that he's going to be able to issue a line command to that monster line, right? Now, the reason why I'm making this video is I need to talk a little bit about that, and if you have played and played this particular module with this particular set of rules in the fifth edition, be super interested in hearing your opinions on that. Because what I have done in this activation is I've issued a line command to uh, these cavalry units that were, that were in line, they've already moved now, and we're in the middle of resolving combat here, shot combat. <coughs> and actually, I issued them a contingent, contingent command, a, a Macedonian contingent command, and I issued these guys who were within nine hexes uh, to this dude here. I issued these three units. Oops, we're out of frame. These three units here, we issued them a line command. Now, I have not read anywhere where it says Alexander can only do one or the other, or either or, or anything like that. So, I have issued a line command. I have activated one uh, Macedonian contingent and paid the extra points that you need to pay, extra orders that you need to pay. And... Uh, and I did some other stuff, right? So I used up my, my seven orders. It's incredibly powerful. Uh, as we can see here, we've executed, uh, we moved these guys over here to start flanking these two chaps. <coughs> and these guys got a flank attack here. This will route. Uh, these guys will be fine. Uh, these units activated. We kind of you know, went at it again here. Um, think that uh, th these all these these you can't see sorry I've got that camera zoomed in a little bit more than I usually do where do you go these chaps over here will um, all stand as is this unit will actually because it it racked up two actually it racked up four um, cohesion heads it came within one of the of its TQ rating of five, and so we had to roll for it to see if it was gonna what was gonna happen. And so we rolled and we rolled a zero, which is a zero, and uh, that then meant that he gets to uh, reduce that by one. Uh, his cohesion hits by one, so he kind of took a lot of damage. Uh, in this fighting, and he has now sort of rallied himself up and, and moved from being four of five to three of five in the losses. So he is not going to rout, and that's nice for them. Uh, these guys picked up two two-step losses, uh, and these guys here uh, will stay engaged, and these guys here will rout. And because uh, it's a double unit, the routing's a little funky. I think they're gonna. I'm basically gonna just flip this guy over and move him one, two, one to there. And I'm gonna have to look up the route rules for uh, for double hex units because now they have to move off the board after the debacle of Hoplite. Everyone got upset about, uh, and in prior modules, everyone got upset about. Uh, the, these larger double units being moved off the board immediately, uh, assuming that they just disintegrated, whereas other units had to march off the board, and it gave <coughs> gave the, the opposing side more time to try and rack up some hits, and then potentially uh, you would you would hit your route limit more quickly because these guys were coming off straight away, because that's 14 route points, because it's got a seven. Sorry about the camera work here, guys. Uh, new digs, trying to get acclimated here. Uh, a seven, so he would get 14 points, uh, whereas, you know, that's a skirmish. Yeah. This guy is a, well, bad example, but he's an eight, that would, that would be worth eight. Uh, cavalry of five, that would be five or six, that would be worth what they're worth. So if you route one of these guys, he's got to march all the way off the board uh, before you get to count the points, whereas the, these guys were routed immediately. Anyway, 
So we, we're going to double check what, what actually happens there. And if you, if you know what happens there, let me know. We'll put it in the, in the uh, comments. This dude's actually in column. He requires a column marker. I don't believe I have one handy here. Uh, yeah, there we go. So he's in column. I was trying to sneak up and, and get in line here before the cab could get around the corner, but I might be a bit late unless I can activate pretty soon. Uh, so we're in a little bit of strife over there. But I'd like to know what to do with this guy, so I'll have to uh, stop the video and check that out. Anyway, I thought I'd just check in with you and show you the, the power of Alexander, keeping in mind that he can activate later on in the game turn. He could take someone's moment, take someone via trumping, or, and then from there he can go and use his momentum uh, and get an extra activation, so that'd be three, and then he would have still have one more activation either via momentum or if he was to activate uh, normally, uh, he would get one more. So you can get three activations normally, but then as the elite guy, you're gonna get the fourth one basically for free. Very powerful. All right, that's enough uh, waffle for now. Talk to you soon.